It would be easy to dismiss James Edward Oglethorpe as a bit of a dandy. Look at his statue here at the Augusta Common. Short pants, a lot of lace, too many buttons, and that wig. But you know, James Edward Oglethorpe, the man who founded both Georgia and Augusta, was more than a man for his times. Born in England in 1696, Oglethorpe lost his father when he was five. His mother, Eleanor, was Irish, had a temper, and was as politically active as a woman could be in the early 1700s. Oglethorpe dropped out of school, but his social efforts at British prison reform earned him a degree from Oxford. Although his family had a long and painful history as supporters of the Stuart line of kings, Oglethorpe surprised everyone for his first run at Parliament by essentially switching parties and supporting King George. Oglethorpe's efforts to found both Georgia and Augusta and Savannah are well known, but there are some other things about him you might not know, and I'll tell you about those when we get back. Oglethorpe was not a man to mess with. As a young military officer in Europe, he was dining with a German general who lightheartedly splashed some wine in his face at dinner one night. Oglethorpe took his wine goblet and threw it back and hit the German in the face. We splash wine in England too, he said, only we do it harder. There are other stories about George's founder, some questionable. After winning a seat in Parliament, he ran into some political opponents in a tavern. A brawl broke out and Oglethorpe killed a man with his sword. While in Georgia, Oglethorpe spent more than a hundred thousand pounds, about a half a million dollars, to wage a war on Spain. No one knows where he got the money. He was not above altering maps to increase his colony's territory. George's English trustees placed restrictions on owning land in the colony. Oglethorpe quietly acquired about 40,000 acres across the river in South Carolina. He was a religious man, but he didn't like going to church. He was a ladies' man too, and as he got older, he got more attention. Women half his age boasted about flirting with him. One, Hannah Moore, called him perhaps the most remarkable man of his time, heroic, romantic, and full of the old gallantry. When the fighting in the American Revolution broke out, Oglethorpe, normally very vocal in Parliament, stayed quiet. He is still silent today, but the accomplishments of this remarkable man still speak for him over the centuries. For more of Kirby's Augusta, subscribe to us on YouTube or check us out on AugustaChronicle.com.